Good morning, Gladwin Free Methodist Church. God is good. And all the time. Uh, we're so glad you're here today. Uh, I'm Pastor Phil. If you don't know me, if you already knew me, I'm still Pastor Phil. Um, but today, I just want to highlight a couple things. One, this is the first Sunday of November, which is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. And it's also um, the Sunday in which we kick off our month, the missions in which we... Um, we seek to communicate how we're involved with different missionaries and ministries all around the world. And I was looking at the ministries and missionaries that we are part of partnering with, and virtually all of them are in countries that are at risk or high risk uh, for persecution. So we need to be people of prayer. Um, but another thing I want to highlight, I've been here 20 years, and I never remember getting to November and having our missions goals met. But that happened this year. And uh, we need to give God praise. And that puts us in position this month as we, um, there are more crises and emergencies in countries that we partner with than there have ever been. And that puts us in unique position to help uh, meet some of those crisis issues in Haiti and other places um, in a unique way. So God's doing a big thing, right? And we need to be faithful and see what he continues to do. So we just want to give him praise for that. And I know Sue's probably got an announcement, right? She's got three announcements, and I'm going to probably give one if I don't shut up. So Sue, come and make them. <laughs> i got to find you a mic. Good morning. Um, I just have a few announcements this morning. The first one is about the Christmas boxes. There's still some empty boxes there for Operation Christmas Child. If you're wanting to take one, they are due back next Sunday. So if they're not here, if you can't get them back here by next Sunday, see me and we'll try and make some kind of arrangements. And if you have questions about what it's all about, see me too, and I'll be happy to try and tell you what it's all about. Um, I, I'm hoping that you are enjoying your thank offering, and if you don't, uh, the, the calendar that with each day, I'm learning about our missionaries, and um, we're going to be gathering that thank offering on the 28th. I'm, yeah, on the 28th, we'll just bring it to the Lord for with thanks for all that He's done. Um, if you don't have one of those, you can see me, and there's a, I think a few left in the back. And last but not least, I'd like Pastor Phil and Donna and Pastor Steve and Michelle to come up here. October was the month of appreciation for our pastors. And um, we just wanted to bless them and thank them for all that they've done for us. And especially in the difficult times that we've been going through to just uh, give us direction and, and leading and, and uh, bringing God's word to us. And so I'm going to give them each an envelope. And Dave Petherbridge is going to come and pray over them. Pray with me if you would. Father God, we want to thank you for these men. We ask your anointing on them and their families, Lord, as they minister together. Father, we pray, pray that the passion of Christ would just burn in their hearts, that you would give them a vision for Gladwin Free Methodist Church. Father, we just ask that you would help them as they shepherd, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, so very much. It's a joy to serve here. Um, Pastor Steve is going to lead us with the scripture and a call to worship. I want to echo what Pastor Phil said. It has um, obviously been, been a trying couple of years uh, throughout the land. And um, the, the support of you all and uh, and being church and living out the mission of the church has been great and to, to see God move in incredible ways uh, throughout his kingdom here on earth has been nothing short of amazing and along those lines I want to share with you the first six verses of the uh, 105th Psalm oh give thanks to the Lord call upon his name 
Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O oh, offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Uh, and so we are those of us who, who follow him and have accepted the, the gift of saving grace and the atonement of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are amongst his chosen ones and, and brought in, uh, grafted in as uh, offspring of Abraham. And so this, uh, this is encouraging us and, and directing us to give thanks to the God and call on his name, to sing praises to him, to tell of his wondrous works and his miracles. And we had uh, Pastor Phil and, and uh, Dr. Al and I in the back were sharing just a couple of amazing things that we know of that God has done. Um, you know, Jim Grant had back surgery, as many of you uh, know, and um, the doctors were amazed at how well things went. And for the first time in years, Jim was able to wiggle his toes. Uh, the doctors were amazed at what God had done in the midst of that. Um, Michelle and I have a friend who has, uh, she was two weeks ago um, on 100% ventilator support uh, due to COVID. Uh, and today, though she's still in the hospital, uh, she's just on oxygen support. She's, she's walking, she's talking, she's posting on Facebook, she's eating normally. Um, and, and God has done an amazing thing there as well. Uh, and in the midst of it, her husband at work fell off from a ladder and broke his back but uh, his back was broken in such a way that he needs five to seven days of rest and then he's back to normal function. So God is doing miracles in this time. He's doing miracles in this season and we have to, have to keep our eyes open and see them. Do not be discouraged and give praise to him for all he is doing and all he has done. Uh, that at the very least will be our sanity if not the hope that we have that we can share uh, in this land, in a time when uh, so many people so desperately need to hear and see of God and from God. Uh, will you pray with me? And then after we pray, we're going to take a few moments to, uh, to honor our veterans. Heavenly Father, it is so amazing to uh, be able to be joined together uh, and approach you to speak to you and for you to hear us and to hear us in such a way that we get to see you move in the lives of uh, so many people in our own lives and in the lives of others around us. Uh, the miracles that you have worked and are continuing to work uh, in our midst is nothing short of amazing. The hope that you give us in a time of despair is phenomenal and just such a gift. And so, Lord, we commit this time to sing songs of praise to you uh, with words of sincerity uh, and an honest and devoted heart of adoration for you. Uh, we seek to hear from your word this morning uh, and to know in our spirit that your spirit has met with us and is changing us and is inspiring us to take uh, one more step uh, today and the next and the next and the next. And Lord, we pray uh, amongst your church, this expression of your church, as well as all the others uh, around the world that are meeting this morning, that your spirit would move in such a profound way, that your light would be made known in the midst of the darkness that surrounds us, uh, that we would see many more lives transformed in your name and by your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. There are sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, our grandparents, neighbors, and friends. They served in a thousand different ways in places spanning the globe, watching, waiting, and ready at a moment's notice to give what was asked of them. So now, we pause to express our gratitude and love toward those who served. Each 
swore a sacred oath to protect. And each bravely stood in our place around the world, all so that we could stand secure in the land of the free. Words like sacrifice, honor, commitment, integrity, bravery, and courage hardly scratch the surface of our gratitude for their service. While our words fail against the enormity of expressing our thanks for all you've done, we still raise our voices and honor you in our hearts, which are filled with the deepest kind of gratitude. To all of you, we pause to say, God bless you. And thank you for your service. I know we have some veterans here. If you would stand, we want to pray uh, with you, for you. I know that I'm married to one, so she better stand. And I know there are several others. We want to thank you uh, and show you our appreciation. Um, and I also want to remind you, let's give them a hand. And <clears throat> Thursday, every year um, on Veterans Day, they gather at the courthouse here in Gladwin at 11 a.m. And if you're able, I encourage you to go to that to show your support. Well, let's pray together. Father, these men and women that stand before us, Lord, have uh, given of themselves and they have, they have sacrificed. And Lord, they have um, been part of, of so many things that we know nothing about. And Lord, I pray that this week, as, uh, as people uh, remember our veterans, that, uh, that you would encourage them and their families and their loved ones, that they would be mindful uh, that you are a God who is with them and who will draw near to them. Lord, I pray that you would bring healing to them emotionally, uh, mentally, and spiritually, that you would help them to know that you are a God who loves them. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for uh, what they have done and what they continue to do and how they serve. And Lord, we uh, praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We serve a great, great God. And uh, you can be seated for a few moments. And as you're being seated, I just want to remind you that what you're just saying is true. Um, the hope we have in the Lord is not, is not hope like we um, say passively. You know, you hear people say, I hope so, you know. Or I hope this happens. And, we, and it's a very uh, passive thing where we really don't know. But we have this eternal hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is certain. And whatever we walk through, whatever the trial is, whatever the circumstances, uh, God is always on the throne. And I know this. Every issue, every circumstance we go through on this earth will pass. And God will be with us. And God will go for us. And... Um, one of the missionaries we're going to highlight right now, we've been walking with her for many, many years. And God has been faithful. And he continues to be faithful. And she has a few words for us. We're going to show her video right now. Hello. I'm a missionary with the Free Methodist Church. I live in Taiwan. And I serve in Taiwan as a professor to um, students studying at Holy Light Theological Seminary. I teach Old Testament and Old Testament languages, Hebrew and Aramaic. And I also am assisting the superintendent of our Rukai district. Taiwan has four districts, north, south, and then two tribal districts, Paiwan and Lukai. And I work with one of the Lukai churches. It's wonderful to be able to speak with you this evening. Or is it morning for you? I'm 12 hours off on the clock from you folks. I get to see the sun first. So if it's Tuesday night here, it's Tuesday morning there. Anyway, um, I am delighted to be able to share with you a few moments of hello and uh, ask that uh, you would pray for me. 
in my ministry here in Taiwan. Praying for me as I teach at Holy Light. Our classes recently have been online. There are a few students who are at school, but most of my students are now online, which is a real challenge for me in teaching. Um, so pray that I would have wisdom in preparing for my classes and pray that I would have uh, creativity in being able to present my lessons in a way that those who are online can understand and would have an interest and not be too bored and go to sleep <laughs> while I am teaching. And then pray for my work at the church. Um, as with everybody in the world, uh, pan the pandemic, our COVID has uh, changed the way we do church. Um, we have recently been able to um, go back to having church in the church building um, while we were on lockdown, then everything was done online. And now we have both online and in, in, in chapel services. So, um, we are, we are trying to get back to normal. Uh, we, um, are finding ways to, uh, meet the needs of those who have, uh, been, um, been held up and with lockdown, um, not being able to uh, travel or not being able to work. We've um, had to uh, find ways to uh, encourage our small groups um, so that um, we don't losing touch with those who belong to our, our church body. So you can pray for uh, me and for the pastor and for our evangelist, the three of us and the pastor's wife, um, who are our uh, ministerial team at our church. Um, I'm looking forward to coming back to the to the states for home assignment, hopefully in 2022. Um, you can pray for the plans on that. So, thank you for uh, listening to me as I share, and uh, may the Lord bless may the Lord bless you. You are precious to the Lord and to me. Thank you for your support and your prayers in Jesus' name. Thank you. Father, we do, we lift up our ministries, those we partner with in Taiwan and the surrounding area. We pray that these requests would be on our heart. And Lord, as we are mindful and pray, Lord, we just pray a special blessing of protection, your hand to be with them, and that your word would go forth. And Lord, we pray us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Sue, and I think she has some helpers, they're going to be bringing around uh, some envelopes with ways you can be praying and, uh, and uh, giving you those if you're willing to pray. Um, we'd like to help you with that. Um, this is, um, there are so many ways to pray for the persecuted church, and we know it makes a difference. And uh, some of, there's a resource table in the back that has uh, prayer cards for all our missionaries. It has... Uh, information from Voice of the Martyr and other information from Open Door Ministry. The World Watch List is there. And in your envelope, there are ways you can pray for the persecuted church. Right? Yep. 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 And, there's, and in your envelope, there's a way you can pray. And uh, so what, what we're going to do this morning is when you get your envelope, see, um, See the request, the little prayer, there's a little prayer sheet in there, a way you can pray. And just we're just going to take a few moments and I read through that. And we're going to pray. We're going to go before the Lord now in a, in a holy, quiet moment and pray for our requests as you receive those.
Father, as we are praying right now and reading information that it's probably information that we didn't know until just a moment ago. Lord, I'm reminded that the church is the greatest network in the world. And that you're the same God that draws near to us, that draws near to the situation, the individual, uh, the crisis that we're currently reading and praying for over right now. Lord, we thank you that you're a God who meets this need, who meets each and every need, who is a God who's able to come alongside even in the midst of suffering. Father, we thank you that the prayers that are going up around this room right now do not go unheard. But the Bible assures us that every prayer comes before you. And I'm reminded that you always do more than we know what to ask for. Father, help us to be faithful in this season to uh, continue to develop a regular habit of praying for your worldwide church. Father, we thank you for the relationship that we have in you and for that relationship that is experienced all around the world. And uh, we want to continue to come before you with prayerful hearts, receptive hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we come before you right now, and we, um, we are so in need to continue to experience who you are, who we are in light of who you are. We're so in need of continuing to give thanks and to celebrate the fact that you um, are a God who cleanses us from sin, who releases us from the bondage it brings in our life. And Lord, I ask right now as... Uh, I seek to bring your word that you would uh, help me to share it in a way that it's anointed of you. And Lord, I know that there have been times where I've tried to bring the word and I've let my own ideas get in the way. And Lord, if I am in error in any way, may your Holy Spirit correct that and may we receive it in a way in which it is intended and in which it is from you. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, uh, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in a couple different places. We're going to um, be in the 10th chapter of, of uh, the Gospel of John for uh, a fair amount of time. As we, we mentioned, every November at the Glavin Free Methodist Church, anyway, we, we focus on the importance of being a church that sees beyond ourselves. It's pretty easy to get focused on what we're going through all the time, isn't it? I know I have. You're in the midst of a circumstance, you're in the midst of a trial, you're in the midst of a struggle, and, um, and we, we don't intend to, but as we think about what we're going to do with that and what, what needs to be done with that, we pray about that. And when, when I pray in those times, sometimes my prayers are only around what I'm going through right now and where I'm at. The problem with that is when I do that, I become so focused on my own issue, my own problem, and my own struggle, I lose sight of the fact that God is bigger than that and that there are others who have struggles as well. Some of the greatest uh, release from my own struggle that way has been, has been when I've been reminded that there is someone else who is going through something as well, and I can pray for them. And isn't it wonderful how when we are others-focused, God helps us to gain a perspective on what we are going through. You know? Not to minimize that we, we go through trials, we go through things we need to bring before God, but as we do that, we need to be mindful that God walks with all of his people. See, we have a mission at our church. We say that we are here to help people find a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Last week, a young mom and her son gave their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why there's white roses here. And we're going to get those to them and connect with them more. But we say we're here to help people find that saving relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to help them to grow and to learn what it means to follow Christ. And we want to help them understand that they too, you too, can share the good news of Jesus with someone else. 
Now, Jesus, Jesus told us at the end of um, the Gospel of Matthew, in the last chapter, the last few verses, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And Jesus said to us, I want you to go and make disciples. He said, as you live your life, it means as you go from point A to point B, as you're going about your life, I want you to make disciples. What's, what does that mean? It means I want people to be able to see in you and to learn from you what it means to follow me. Does it mean that we're going to be um, a follower of Christ who has it together all the time? But it means that we follow Jesus closely, and as we learn from him and grow in him, others can learn from us. And Jesus said to, says to his followers, I want you to baptize them. And he says, and I will be with you to the very end of the age. To be baptized is to become completely immersed in who Jesus is and who we are in him. We, we as a follower of Christ, can help people in that. So as we go into this month, we're mindful that we have this mission to help people know and see who Jesus is, that we, we have this calling and we're part of a church that is far greater than just the community in which we live. We're part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that is connected all around the world. The church is God's people, and God chooses to make his love known in this world through his people, through the church. So we, we seek to share that vision, and we seek to ask God to help us. Lord, help me to focus beyond just what we see here in our town of Gladwin and the region around here. But Lord, help us to be mindful that we are connected with men and women who are serving Christ all around the world. And their prayers, praying changes things. The Bible says it sets captives free. It does. One of the areas that we must engage in is staying aware of the reality of opposition and persecution. We know that Christians face persecution in many parts of the year, of the world. I was looking through some things this past week, and one of the things I read was this year, more than any other of, uh, as I read it, I said this year, more than any other years of my ministry, of, the, of my time here, at Gladwin, and even before that. More than any other time, I've been more aware, and I've seen more uh, crisis due to persecution and a lack of concern for believers worldwide than ever in my life. And we know this. We, we know it's true. We know that the truth of being a follower of Jesus Christ does not exempt us from opposition or suffering or even persecution. I was looking um, at some information that's listed on the World Watch List that Open Doors Ministry puts out. And in uh, their report, they reported this, that they've been putting out this publication, the World Watch List. The World Watch List shows the 50 most dangerous countries in which to be a follower of Christ or where persecution is at its peak. And then it lists other countries uh, as well. But they reported in the 29 years they've been doing that, putting this report out, the top 50 at-risk countries for Christian persecution has... Um, has for the first time ranked every country, every country in the top 50 has ranked as very high or extreme levels of persecution. Every single country in the top 50 is at extreme levels for the first time in 29 years. And it goes on, it talks about even countries outside the top 50, their levels have, most, many of them have risen to high risk what does that tell us? It tells us that there is an enemy that is pursuing us. But we know this. God's already won the war. And he is faithful. This past week, and the president of Voice of the Martyrs, Cole Richards, um, on their most current publication, wrote this in his introductory letter in their magazine. He said, we are pursued by two powerful beings. First and most important, we are pursued by our Creator who actively, worked, who actively works to seek and to save us. 
What a wonderful truth about God's grace and love toward us. But we are also pursued by an adversary, one of God's fallen creatures who pursues us, like a roaring lion, as Peter, Peter writes, like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour with an agenda to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Quote goes on to write, We must maintain a vigilant awareness that our adversary is real and that his malicious pursuit is guaranteed. We fail our young people as well as seekers and new believers if we do not provide them with a clear biblical teaching about this reality. The Apostle Paul's instructions to his mentee, Timothy, provides a good example. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Paul's teaching echoes Christ's repeated promises of the same. In the New Testament, the word translated, dioko, which means persecute, connotes being chased and hunted by an adversary who intends to harm. This is happening to each of us right now, regardless of where we live. While the enemy employs subtly to ex execute his plan in places like the U.S. and Western Europe, he simultaneously works through extreme violence in other nations. Tens of thousands of our Christian brothers and sisters in Africa have lost everything to Islamic extremists in recent years. Church, we need to be a praying people. The Bible tells us when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. We need to be praying that God would raise us, uh, raise an awareness in us where we would be motivated to pray. That we would be willing to stand firm in the faith and that we would also, as we do this, we would share the good news with everyone around us that there is hope that is an eternal lasting hope and his name is Jesus These days in which we live bring us face to face with the reality that we really do live in the midst of a real battle. The mission we are on is life changing. And we will face opposition. Have you noticed, church, that we've faced opposition? I never thought in my life that there would be a time where I would have to put a call out that would say, Church, we're not going to meet in person, but you can connect with us online. Did anyone ever think you would see that happen in America? We would say, well, that's because of a virus. Friends, we know we live in a fallen world. The enemy is seeking to destroy his church. But what are we seeing, church? We are seeing, church, that God is greater than all of this. And I agree with what Austin shared last week, is, is this is a time where God is is shaping us, and God is doing a work in his church, and he is, he is calling us to a deeper commitment. And he's calling us to share ministry and move beyond fear and love people anyway. Even when it's hard. We're living in a time where I have never seen so many people so angry and cynical about so many things in our nation. We make everything political. Have you noticed that? Sometimes I look at social media and I think 85% of the people on here just want to be angry about something. And we forget to have empathy and to care, and we forget that we're called to love people. Look at how we talk about our politicians and what we say about them. We say, well, I could talk about them that way because they're clearly not of God, and they're doing the wrong thing, so I'm going to ridicule them and make fun of them. The Lord convicted me about this. He convicts me about this often, actually, to be honest with you. And then I'm reminded... Do you, do you know that, um, that God used a lot of really bad leaders in the Bible to accomplish his will and his purposes? You ever read about King Nebuchadnezzar? He was certifiably crazy. And God used, he used him to accomplish his will and purposes. God 
will use anyone, whether you voted for them or not, or agree with any, they're, they're politicians, I don't agree with anything they say or stand for. But I know in my heart, God calls me to pray for them. So I pray this, I pray God, I pray that they would make a decision even by mistake that would honor you and accomplish your will. Father, I pray that you would, you would confuse their agenda so they do things and make decisions that would do things that would bring honor to you. I believe God can do that. If I believe God can heal someone of a sickness, of a virus, of a cancer, of a, in a surgery, and I've seen him do that, we've given praise for that this morning, then I believe God can move on our leaders. I believe God can move when we pray for prisoners that are being persecuted. I believe God can move, and he does move, and do things and move in a way where his name would be glorified and lifted up. We really are pursued by the everlasting God. We're pursued by the God who will never leave us. We're pursued by the everlasting God in the midst of, when we face opposition, you know God has already gone before you. So I want to go to John chapter 10. I know we were, I had you in John chapter 10 just a few weeks ago. We were talking about the good shepherd. And we talked about a couple different things. We talked about the prodigal son and how God pursued him, how God pursued the older brother. We, we went uh, we were in Luke 15 then, and then I brought us back to John chapter 10 as well. But I want to go back to John chapter 10 today, and I want you to, I, I just want to ask, as we go through this passage, I want you to think about the fact that Jesus is speaking to the reality that there is an enemy. So Jesus says this in John chapter 10, he says, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep, and the watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. You know, Jesus is the good shepherd, and he knows you. He knows who you are. He calls you by name. And I don't know what you're walking through right now, but he will lead you in that. When he has brought out his own, all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for all the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep, so when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus is speaking to the reality that there is an enemy. There is one who seeks to steal. There is one who seeks to lead us astray. There is one who seeks to destroy your life. But we are also pursued, and we have a shepherd who goes before us and who loves us. The enemy wants to lead us astray, but the good shepherd goes before us. As we go through, as we read in John chapter 10, we see in verses 4 and 5 that Jesus says this. He says, his sheep will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run from him. So how do, we, how do we respond to that line? You know, to be honest, when I read that line, I often think something like this, Lord, it seems to me 
that there are many who claim to follow you. There are many who say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I know Jesus. Oh yeah, I, I said a prayer when I was little once. I'm a Christian. I know what that is. There are many who claim to follow Jesus. But I'm wondering, I wonder this, and I often wonder this when I read this passage. I'm like, Lord, why are so many deceived by wrong voices? Why is it so many who claim to follow you don't seem to recognize your voice and, and, are, and willingly go to something that is destroying their life? You see, the statement Jesus uh, gives us is implying something. It's implying that the sheep, that you and I, that the followers of Christ are actively listening and seeking to know the shepherd more. They want to know what the shepherd has for them next. They're not passively engaged. They're not saying, oh yeah, I prayed a prayer. I was 12 and a half and I said these words and I'm a Christian and that's, that's how I know it. But, but I do everything. I do, I don't, that has no impact in any other part of my life now. I just know I said those words. That's not a follower of Christ, friends. A follower of Christ is actively listening and seeking to follow the good shepherd. Now I think of some really profound things sometimes, and I thought of this this morning. And I was really tired. Well, not really tired, because we got that extra sleep, right? You know, something like that. But I was going over this, and I was, I was thinking about what it means to actively listen. You know, yesterday I was, I was watching a bit of, of college football. And uh, as I was, was watching the game, there, there are some teams, to, and I'm not going to tell you who I was watching because that's not important. But anyway, um, there are some teams in college football, they'll, they'll send plays in from the sidelines, right? And they will, they'll have pictures or all these different things up. And sometimes there are some times where the, there will be a time where the whole team, especially when they're playing offense, will stop. Linemen, backs, quarterback, everybody will stop and they'll turn and look at the sideline and they'll get communication from the coach. I saw it yesterday one time as Michigan was beating Indiana. Anyway, so I gave it up. So anyway, but there was one time, uh, more than once, but one time it took care, I really noticed that went up to the line, the line's all there, the quarterback's to the signal, the whole team stands up, so they turn, they look at the sideline, and they get direction. That's actively listening. That's being engaged in the one who is leading them, right? As a follower, I thought, as a follower of Christ, I was thinking about that this morning, I want to be listening to the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, where when I come up to something and I know I'm going to face opposition, where instead of just doing my own thing and running my own play, I stop and I turn and I look at Jesus, what do I do next? How will you lead me? Um, Jesus is implying in this statement that the sheep won't follow a stranger because they're engaged in what the shepherd has for them. The good shepherd goes before us. He leads us. And we, we are invited to seek his face. Pastor Steve read to us the, um, early in the service from Psalm uh, chapter 105. And I just want to point out just a couple verses real quickly in that passage. But it says this, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done, sing to him, sing praise to him, Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glorify his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. To seek the Lord, to seek his face, is to study and to learn everything about who he is. It is to seek to want to, want to recognize him what it looks like to follow him, what he sounds like, how we hear him. If we're in a habit of seeking God, we will be in a better position to hear God's voice. And Jesus said, he came that we might have life and have it to the full. If you're seeking God, 
When the enemy seeks to distract you, you'll recognize it immediately that that is danger. That is not of God. So today, church, as we think about this, and we think about this passage in John where Jesus talks about the reality, there's an enemy who seeks to come in and disrupt everything. He also reminds us, but I am your good shepherd. I go before you. I give you everything you need. So as we consider that reality and that truth, we're reminded that we are called to be a follower of Christ. We're called to be a people. We're called to be a church that stays informed, that stays engaged in every part of the church that is all around the world, and that we pray for our brothers and sisters. We're reminded that God's mission is a mission of moving forward, and he leads us. You know, when I read requests and prayers from those who face persecution, my perspective changes. You know, there's these little app, there's a Voice of the Martyr and Open Doors have these little prayer apps that you can put on your phone. And you can click on it every day and it will give you a focus every day of a different country uh, different, or different people that are facing persecution. And some of them are, all of them are in really harsh circumstances. But there are those times where they'll give you an individual or a family to pray for. And they're in the midst of it. I mean, they're, oftentimes they're fearing for their life. And they will pray for things like, pray that we have courage to love those who want to kill us. That changes my perspective, you know? They'll say things like, pray for my enemy. Pray for those enemies who, who are seeking to persecute us because they're lost and they need to know Jesus. That changes my perspective. Pray that we would be able to stand firm as we face this. Pray that we would not develop hearts that are hateful. They ask the, for prayer such as that. So I find myself, when I, as I focus on that and as I use those resources, I find myself in seasons of oftentimes confessing my own heart, saying, Lord, help me to seek you more. Help me to have uh, a different perspective, a different attitude um, to care in a way where I would pray for those who I would even consider my enemy. These are days of opportunity for us to be the church like never before. As we begin the passage, we talked about how Paul reminded Timothy that there would be persecution, and he encouraged him to learn into the learn into the Word and to be equipped by the Word. In fact, uh, Paul told Timothy that the Word of God is useful for everything, for teaching, rebuking, and correcting. The Word of God helps us to hear what God has for us. Peter told us that the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But we can resist him. And in Ephesians 6, we're given, we're given this awesome way to pray. Praise team's going to come. We're going to do a closing song in a moment. I want to pray uh, some of this passage. If you have your Bibles, you can go to the book of Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians. I'm going to go to the last chapter of Ephesians. Verse 10 says this, Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Paul says, look, we're in the midst of things and there are physical things in front of you, but that's not who you're fighting against. You're fighting against the enemy who's seeking to destroy. But Paul writes, there are weapons, there are, there are things where that will help you be an offense as you pray. So he says in verse 13, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist the breastplate of righteousness in place, 
and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert always and keep on praying for all the saints. Father God, Lord Jesus, right now we come before you and Lord, we are in need of making this scripture something we go to often. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be men and women who seek your face, who seek to know you more, who seek to hear what you have for us, who seek to be led by you. Lord, I pray that the belt of truth would be firmly wrapped around us, that the breastplate of righteousness would be in place. We would know my righteousness is because you died for me and you rose again, and you are my Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that we would find that our feet are ready to go where you call us to go, that we have a burning within us to share the good news of who you are, that we would find that we even pray for those who oppose, that we would pray for enemies, that their hearts would be changed. And Lord, I pray that you would protect us from evil. I pray that the attacks of the enemy would, would fall and be extinguished by the shield of faith. Lord, we know that salvation is from you. So, Lord, I pray that that helmet would guard our hearts and our minds in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we would be people who pray, who fast, who come before you. And, Lord, this morning, as we worship you now, Lord, if there are those who need to come and pray, there's an invitation here for them to kneel. If there's someone here who needs, who is compelled to pray with a brother or sister in the Lord, that they would take time to do that. But, Lord, just I pray in this moment, in these, this time we have, that you would meet with us and that we would hear from you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.